Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault 2, and we're back out here in the garage for a very rare video. Yeah, because I am here to admit I was wrong about something. I know. I get a lot of stuff wrong, but I'm not going to admit it very often, and sometimes I forget to say things in my videos, or sometimes I just have the wrong information at the time, or maybe when I shoot a gun, I experience something and I think it shouldn't be that way when actually it's designed to be that way. So I have to come to you and apologize about giving you some wrong information and apologize to Atlas Gunworks, which by the way, I don't think they watch my videos. Nobody from them reached out. But I want to make sure that you guys know that there is no problems with the Atlas Gunworks Erebus that I talked about last night where the slide does not lock open on an empty magazine. I thought it was something wrong because I have never shot a gun with the exception of older guns like the MP5 that that's intrinsic to the design, but every modern semi-automatic handgun that has a slide like this, that uses this type of operation that's based off of, let's say, the 1911 or whatever, I am... Sure, 99.9% .9 of them lock open on the last round. I have never in my life seen a gun that is designed to not do that. But apparently, some of you guys um, knew this information, told me in the comments, like, hey, I think that might be a model or a variation of this model that it is designed not to lock open. And as I said, I had never heard that. I was like, what in the world? Why wouldn't you want your slide to lock open? Well... I contacted D, who owns this pistol, and I said, hey, how did you order it? What is it? Do you have any specs on it? And he sent me the spec sheet. And yes, this gun is designed to not lock open. Now, this is strictly a competition gun. That's what it's designed for. But you guys know I review guns from the perspective of an average gun guy. And the perspective of somebody that may just want a particular gun or can afford a particular gun, and maybe they're not a competitive shooter, maybe they're not... Um, a bearded tactician that goes out and rolls in the dirt, you know, like uh, some people think that you can only own a tricked out AR or AK if you if you go out and do that. Because no, anybody can own that, right? It's the joy of the Second Amendment. You can own any gun you want, okay? And maybe there are people out there that uh, aren't competition shooters, but go to the the range or the gun store or the gun show, see this gun, and go, that is awesome. I want that gun so bad because they want a twenty eleven, they can afford it, and then they're like. What in the world is this? Is it broken? So, I'm here to tell you, it is not supposed to lock back. Now, we have the what of this equation. It's not supposed to lock back. But now let's ask what I think is the most important question. Why? Why is it not supposed to lock back? Well, people were telling me that as a competition gun, which this is supposed to be run fast, there are competitors that don't want their slide to be locked open. Now, for what purpose? I have no idea. I, honestly, I've kind of thought about this. I'm like, I know I can go online, read some forums, but I'm just asking myself in a logical sense. Okay, I know how those competitions work. I know generally what they do. Why would you not want your slide to lock open? Because for me, I was thinking, okay, so if you're shooting and you go empty, you want the slide to be back. It's already done the work for you. So when you reinsert your new magazine, all you have to do if you want to uh, use the slide release, if you want to do it with the thumb, or just pull the slide back and it will go home, it's really fast, really easy. But if you have bang, 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 click, now you're dropping the magazine, reinserting one, which by the way, sometimes, I don't know if you've noticed this, if you have a magazine that is topped off with ammunition and the spring is under a lot of tension, sometimes inserting a magazine can be a little bit difficult. Yeah, so like it's because that follower in that first round is going up against the bottom of the slide. So I like to have the slide open to reduce any issues with that. But I'm thinking to myself, okay, bang, 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 click, drop the mag, new one in there. Now I have to rack the whole slide. It's going to be a slower process. I can't figure it out, but apparently this is a new trend in the competitive community. And 
I'm going to say something here, and please do not be mad at me if you are one of these people, but I don't understand the competitive gun world. And it's not that I don't appreciate competition or don't think these people are amazing shots or, you know, don't think they should do what they do. But for me, it holds such little interest. I guess I've mentioned in the past that uh, what I've done for most of my life in the music world is so competitive that when I go to the range, I don't want it to be competitive. I, I want to enjoy guns without competition. I just want to shoot them. I don't want to worry about, you know, um, you know, taking seconds off a split or whatever and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It just, it doesn't interest me. The games don't interest me. Um, I find them honestly just kind of, kind of boring. I've watched some matches and yes, there's some people out there that can shoot really fast, but also I don't understand the practical application of that. I know people will say, well, if you can do that stuff, you can shoot guns fast. If you ever had to use it in some type of self-defense scenario, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, maybe there's a little bit of that, but I just don't see it. I just don't see it. But as I said, if you're a competitive shooter, I have nothing against you. It's just not my cup of tea. Like, I'm sure there are some videos that I make or guns that I'm interested in that you're not interested in. And that's okay. That's what makes the whole world go around. But yeah, so um, I don't understand this trend. And I can tell you in the music world, I see this stuff all the time. There's these fads that somebody will do something, whether it be with the equipment that they play, uh, instrument-wise. You know, everyone's like, oh my gosh, this is the, the most revolutionary thing ever. And then all of a sudden, everybody who looks up to that person goes and does that thing or buys that thing to be just like them. And then you realize... After a couple of years, you kind of go back to what's always been, if that makes any sense. You know, you have guns like, which, which this is based off of the 1911. It's been around since 1911, well, actually really 1910, but it's been around for a long time. And you would think that if there was some advantage to having the slide not lock open on an empty magazine, that somebody before now would have figured that out. But I guess it's, a, it's the new trend. Uh, it's something that I will have to mention in the range report. Um, it's kind of a deal breaker to me, to be honest with you, about this gun. Uh, I reviewed the range footage, and this gun shot better than I remembered. So this thing was a great experience, very, very accurate, um, just a fantastic gun. Another thing I noticed when I was kind of putting together the bullet point script and starting it is I realized this gun does not have a front backup sight, a front sight at all. So if you wanted to run irons, you you can't. It's, it is only optics. And I guess some people are going to like that too. Uh, but for me, I like my guns to have at least backup iron sights. Just me uh, personally. So the slide doesn't lock back. It's not meant to. So when I said that there was a quality control issue... There wasn't. That is the way this gun is designed. But if you're a competition shooter, tell me why in the world that is. Why would you want that? Because for me, I like having that feel of I am empty. Bang, bang, bang. And you know when that slide locks open, it has a completely different feel. And you've shot so many guns that it's instinctual for you to drop the magazine. You know what to do. There's one time in the review where you see me, I do kind of flinch. Okay, it's the second mag. And so I go click, 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 and it's like a little bit. I go, look, just a little bit. Not a bad one, but I anticipate it, and you can tell. And I'm, and I'm leaving it in there because it's my experience with this gun. But, yeah. So anyway, uh, tell me what you think about a gun that's not designed to have the slide lock back and what you think its purpose is. And if you know the purpose, does the purpose make logical sense? But I tend to believe this is probably going to be a fad. It has to be. Guns are just the, a certain way for over a hundred years that are semi-automatic and have the the slide like this. I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. So maybe I can learn some more from you guys. So anyway, I fully admit that I was wrong. And I'm correcting the record. Okay? Uh, so no quality control issues with this gun. Fantastic build. It just might not be my cup of tea. But I did shoot it really well. And I'll tell you, it's going to get a very high score after looking at the range footage 
It's probably going to get four and a half stars out of five, uh, mainly because it's so darn accurate. It's really well built, but I don't like the fact the slide doesn't lock open and no front sight. <laughs> so those are the big the big no nos for me. But four and a half stars out of five for that thing probably is what I'm going to give it when it's all said and done and I film the video. Which actually this one's going to be the next video that I film out here in the garage. Uh, I did the uh, Knight's Armament SR30 today. Okay, uh, before I let you go, there's one other thing I did want to talk about, and it's one of those things that I feel like I need to address publicly and make sure that. People understand how much I appreciate everything they do for the channel. And I do this from time to time when people are very generous and kind to me. And uh, I just want to say it means the world. Um, every month, as you guys know, I have a, I have an ammo sponsor, Brown Works. You guys hear me talk about him and that grip company in like, every range report. Okay? And you guys do not realize how much money has to be spent in running this channel because the ammunition costs. I mean, go look at all the range reports I've done and then in your mind go, how much is 9mm around? How much is 5.56 five, around? How much is whatever it is? And start adding up the money. And it adds up fast, okay? And if I did not have Mark Brown of Brownworks helping me out, there is no way I could do this. And I just want to give him a huge shout out because every month he asks me, hey, what are you reviewing? What do you need this month? And I'll kind of look at what I got going on and going, okay, I have enough for this. I need this. I might need a little bit more of this caliber. I might need, I might need this, whatever. And he sends it. And uh, he orders it uh, from, um, what is it, Lucky Gunner, I think, or something like that. And the box comes and... Often it's exactly what I ask for, you know, and I try to be as reasonable as possible, like meaning like I never want to take advantage of a situation. And so I look at what I'm having. I'm like, OK, I got four guns that are in nine millimeter. I'm going to need, you know, boxes of nine. And if you and if it really helped me, it would help me out if you sent me some jacketed hollow point just for my hollow point test or defensive ammo, whatever I said, you know, you know, just just whatever you can. And honestly, if I got like, you know, a little bit of ammo, I mean, I'm still humbled beyond belief and I'm so thankful but this month I asked for nine millimeter five five six and I needed some 300 Winchester Magnum and I got the box today and it was a lot of ammo it was a lot of ammo and I just want to make a public thank you to Mark because I could not do this without him I could not do it. Uh, I, I, I review too many guns, and I hope that my ads and my little ad reads and sending people his way helps his company. Because I was not expecting what I got in the mail today. Uh, I guess, or UPS, or one of those carriers that, that can deliver ammo. But I'm just humbled beyond words, because it's not like just a couple of boxes. I got stuff to help me make range reports for the foreseeable future, like... The next few months, it's it's awesome for nine and for nine and five five six. I mean, it's it's humbling. It's humbling, and I know how much money it is, and I I cannot thank him enough. I cannot thank him enough. And every range report, by the way, that I make, and literally, I am out until September of next year. Like every week, I have two videos a week out until next year, and it's right now we're in mid sorry mid September is what we're doing. So when I film this, this video next, its release date is going to be se mid-September of 2025. Yeah, that's how far out I am. And that's a lot of guns. It's a lot of ammo. And I sent him a link of every video that I make, uh, showing him, you know, the ads that I'm making for him or the ad reads and how I include his stuff in the video. And so I just want to give a public, huge public thank you to Mark Brown of Brownworks because... Um, his his sponsorship uh, helps me so much because I could not do this on what little money comes in from, uh, you know, like YouTube ads. I could not do it. Trust me. It doesn't even come close to even breaking even. Okay. And so to have somebody like that, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of just, I just want to show my appreciation. And I'm going to say, if you guys 
are in the need of grips, go check out Brown Works. You will not be disappointed. Everybody that's bought grips from him have not been disappointed. He can make anything. And if you want to support my channel, support his company if you need grips. Please, please go out there and do that because it is humbling beyond words. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say. So I needed to eat a little bit of humble pie. I did not know all of the information on this pistol. The slide is not supposed to lock open. I don't like that feature, but it is built to be that way, so it functions like it should. And I wanted to thank Mark of Brown Works because, yeah, he's the best sponsor of any gun channel out there. So that's all I wanted to come to you tonight and talk about. So thanks for watching. And if you watched to the end of this video, the word, actually it's going to be words of the day, is going to be thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark, um, because all of this, the main channel runs because of Mark. It, it, it's, it's, it's humbling, and so huge shout out to him, and if you've never checked out his website, please go to the link on any of my range reports. In fact, I'll even put it as a comment in this video, as like the sponsor link I was put. Um, just go check him out. Just, just just, go look at what he has, and if you don't see what you're looking for, literally email him, and he can make it set you up. It's unbelievable, uh, and thank him for supporting me, uh, and I know he does other channels as well. So he has a huge, huge uh, support of gun channels in the Second Amendment. So that's all I want to say tonight, so thank you, Mark. That's the word of the day. Thank you for joining me here in the garage, and let me know what you think about a gun that doesn't have a slide lock open feature after the last round. So, as always, thanks for watching.